Do you have any? Uh... Yes, we have a friend, a dear friend, who mm-hmm. would love for you to say rhinoceros. Yes. In the way that you said it on D&D Beyond, if that's possible. Yes. <laughs> because he's obsessed. <laughs> yes. Grant, Grant, Grant Ellis. for you, Grant. This is for you. He got, he got hung up on this, the, the, the gravitas that you put into this one word, the, the story that must have that been in your mind when you said it. For rhinoceros? Mm-hmm. Rhinoceros. But if you want the real, the real gravitas, if I recall, I put a little stank on Tarrasque because it's oh. my favorite. It's my favorite D and D creature. Right, and so, like, you go through the list, and it's like, you know, adult red dragon, this thing, this thing, Tarrasque. Because oh, yeah. I mean, it's a fucking Tarrasque. It's, it's a Tarrasque. It's, <laughs> it's, it's gonna destroy you. Just be like, Prue just kind of steps up. <laughs> We're Lisa Chan, Lisa Chan, this is Pruitt, Web DM News. <laughs> the spell jam are going to be the next thing. Oh no, oh no, on the spot. I, I cannot confirm nor deny. Where our goal is. To, it is, uh, it is. Yeah. I passed my inside check. <laughs> Pruitt's convinced. I'm going I'm to find Merle's. It's yeah. going to get me in trouble, uh-huh. whether it's true or not. Yep, yep. It's gonna <laughs> if be... it's not true, how would you? why would you get in trouble? Oh, oh. I really don't know. <laughs> Uh, it is. So I like. <laughs> what about what? What's in store for Adventurers League? Can you give us a hint about for that? For Adventurers League, um, I will say that we have um, after season eight and Waterdeep wraps up, um, a sort of like mini season, kind of like we did with uh, for Tales of the Yawning Portal. Uh-huh. There's going to be a shorter season coming up before the next big season. I'll say that mm-hmm. we've got something cool in the works for that. Yeah. Would you say the next season is out of this world? <laughs> You're not gonna get any more clues out of me, bro. Don't let me talk to him okay, okay. anymore. Bruce, just he's on it. He's on his kick with Spelljammer. Um, any hints for Mad uh, the Dungeon of Mad Mage? Because uh, that's like this tomorrow, right? Oh, it's is, up tomorrow. Oh my gosh, the already? Ninth, the ninth? Oh, yay! Today's the eighth. Tomorrow's ninth. Yep. Mm-hmm. Maybe. <laughs> um, hints for Dungeons of the Mad Mage. I guess I will feel comfortable saying that I helped write uh, one of the levels. Mm. Well, I helped write four of the levels, but in one of them, I was reading what changes they made, and they've added an, a naked statue of Halister in one. Nice. So, spoiler alert. <laughs> Does it mean like full frontal? Like. Um, I will say they don't go into that much. There's, there's, there's not, not commission like, guard of it. Yeah. <laughs> these, these are the hard-hitting facts that we need to know. Yeah. Okay, so we are here at, at Game Hole Con with uh, one of the Holy Trinity uh, himself, uh, Jeremy Crawford. <laughs> you get a lot of questions about rules on, on Twitter and social media and stuff. How many times a day would you say that you basically give the answer, well, if you read the rules, it's like right there? So I, I have given that answer a lot. I see it. Uh, and it's actually an answer I don't tire of giving. Yeah. Because it could be read as, oh my god, please read the book. And yes, please everyone read the book. But it's actually also a way of me reminding people, you all have the power. Right. You have the books in your hands. You can internalize this and make the game your own. Mm-hmm. Uh, because at the end of the day, even when you know what the rules are, since this game's all about the dungeon master and each individual group shaping the game to their own desire, once you know it, then you can confidently tweak it uh, yeah. to, to your heart's content, or not. I mean, because some groups, they love playing the rules the way they're written. Mm-hmm. But for me, a great starting point is knowing what's in that book, yeah. and then build on that foundation. Yeah. yeah. I think for me, one of the things that I take away from when we're checking out your tweets or something online is like just this idea that not to read something into the rules, that the rules mm-hmm. say what the rules say. And that for me, that was like a big eye-opener for 5th edition where I was like, I'm trying to bring in 3rd edition stuff mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and other games as well. And like, no way, we can like just read the rules and not and take them for what they are. Like, I, I guess I'm, I'm curious of where that came from, like that purposeful design philosophy or, or, or something. I don't, I don't know that even have a question. So, <laughs> so that has always been my approach to rules design. I mean, this goes back to before my work on D&D, back when I co-designed the role-playing game Blue Rose, Mm -hmm. Uh, some of the writing I did for Mutants and Masterminds, Warhammer. uh, That's always been my approach, and it's funny, it's actually informed by 
my early training in theology because I did my master's degree is in religious <laughs> studies. I went to seminary. There you go. Oh my. Where you where you actually develop a very acute sense of how important the text is and having the text be clear. Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, and how much uh, confusion can arise when the text uh, doesn't say what it means. Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, I, I was also uh, an English teacher for a while, mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes my teacher hat will slip on accidentally <laughs> yeah. when I'm talking about D&D. &D. Uh -huh. uh, and I'm also, another part of it is I'm actually a huge board gamer. I play tons of board games, mm. and I am such a nerd, I actually enjoy reading the rule books for <laughs> board games, and I really love the art of a well-written rule. Right. And for me, the best rules just say what they mean and nothing else. Right, in plain yeah. language. Mm -hmm. just really yeah. So, I, this is the question, I, the, like my burning question. Your favorite house rules for your like home game. How do you modify the game that's like, here, this is D&D for everybody. What about your home game? So, uh, I get asked this question a lot, and I honestly have no <laughs> house rules. Yeah, just I, pure raw? I, well, so, I mean, first off, because because I'm in the unusual position of the, being the game's lead rules designer, it's basically the game is my house rules. Right. Yeah. Okay, sure. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, and, well, there we go. But within, within the system that we've set up, the variant rule that I make a ton of use of, especially in my home game, mm. is the, the rule where you can use a, an, a, a different ability score with your skills. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I often am asking people mm -hmm. to mix and match. Intimidate with strength instead yep. of charisma. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, I will even pair sometimes unusual abilities with some of the knowledge-based skills. Uh, right, right. Uh, for instance, uh, I might have somebody try to persuade somebody, but using their history skill because the persuasion they're doing is all about showing off their historical knowledge. Oh, so, idea, right? yeah. so I might have someone make a charisma history check. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and, and so I love that kind of elegant tinkering that you can do with the rules as they are. And I, not only as a designer, but also as a gamer, this is true when I'm playing other people's role-playing games too, I gravitate towards super simple systems like that that are endlessly mutable. Yeah. Because if you get something like that, the need for house rules starts to evaporate. Sure, yeah. Uh, I also, quite honestly, because I've been in the position before of house ruling games, right. uh, uh, games I didn't didn't design, and what I generally find is if I'm house ruling the heck out of a game, mm -hmm. I ultimately would rather be playing a different game uh, because yeah. I also love playing other role playing games. Right, and so. I don't house rule D&D a ton, not only because of my relationship relationship <laughs> to it as a designer, yeah. but just as a gamer, I play D&D because I want to play D&D. If I, if I really wanted the system to be something else entirely, like if I'm like, oh, I really want this to have a full Lovecraftian feel, well, then I'll go play Call of Cthulhu. Right, yeah, right, uh, right. There, there are a lot of great games uh, well, that, uh, oh, that, hit, that hit different targets. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. So uh, piggybacking on that, like what, what other than D&D, what are some of your favorite uh, role-playing games? So. Uh, Call of Cthulhu to me is a classic. I've been in some wonderful Call of Cthulhu campaigns over the years. Uh, I have played various iterations of Marvel superheroes. Uh, the two versions that are nearest to my heart are the, the original uh, Marvel superheroes, uh, and then I actually loved uh, Mike Selinker's Saga Edition, the card-based one that came out many years ago yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, because of how flexible uh, that game was. Uh, I, I am... I enjoy reading many of the different RPGs based on uh, the Apocalypse World engine. Uh, and that's that's the other thing. I'm also a bit of an armchair RPG fan. I think a lot of us are. Like, yeah. I read way more RPGs than I play. Right. Uh, and partly because there are so many of them. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I think uh, one of the RPGs that uh, I've really been wanting to play but haven't had a chance to yet uh, is Dust City Outlaws. Uh, partly because an old colleague of mine, uh, Rodney Thompson, worked on it, but also because actually my husband did the cartography for it, but yeah. I'm embarrassed to say I haven't played it yet. <laughs> uh, so my, 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 pile, my pile of, of unplayed games is, is really big, yeah. uh, because, because on top of it I'm also playing video games. Uh, right, so. <laughs> and then like a full-time job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You need to cure sleep. The, yeah. then, the gamer's uh, eternal <laughs> dilemma, yeah. never yeah. enough time. Uh, what else? What's, what's, on, what's, on your, what's on your gaming radar? 
Um, what's on my gaming radar? I mean, at Game Whole Con here, I'm just doing Adventures League, Adventures League, Adventures League. I'm really glad you guys are checking out an Epic. Yes. Checking out the Open. It's really fun. Very role play focused. Like, if you want to do a heist, you're going to do a heist. Nice. It's fun. Yeah. Um, other than Adventures League, uh, I don't know. I'm walking around. I wanted to check Onyx Path Publishing. I saw they had something cool with Pugmire. They do. You need to be a doggy. Yes. You want to be a good boy? Yes, yeah, so I wanted to yeah. check that out. Are there any references to uh, tunnel snakes in your levels? Um, uh, if there is, you're, you're just going to have to... Re I'm not going to give all the big spoilers <laughs> okay. away. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Everybody knows that tunnel snakes rule. Mm -hmm. Tunnel snakes. And here we are. They, they rule. Finally yeah. united. Yes. Tunnel snakes. Yeah. There we go. Champions. Are you, are you jelly TK? I hope you are. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I hope your gaming group sees this TK. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what clone vat you were from? Because I think ours were adjacent. Uh, I really wish I would have worn my Ray-Ban glasses. I'm pretty sure next time at a con, I'm going to cosplay as you. Okay. So, so, so throw people off. You need a body double. But, but, but remem remember, uh, we're not supposed to reveal that we're clones. Right. Oh, right. shit. Yeah. Well, I'm you're only just, a Nexus 5. Well, yeah, you're just like, <laughs> you're just made of snow and illusion. Yeah. So, you yeah. know. <laughs> but yeah, do you have any party words for our fans out there? Um, uh, just just for everyone to keep, uh, you know, enjoying D&D, play the games you love, uh, and feel confident and powerful with the game. Uh, you know, especially when it comes to D&D &D and its rules. Dig into the books, make them your own. Uh, it's your game. Uh, Enjoy it. Yeah. Excellent advice. Excellent. Awesome. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Absolute honor. The sage himself. Yes. There you go. It's your game. Do what you want with it. Yep. <laughs> You're pretty much die happy. <laughs> that was really awesome. Um, thank you. Excellent. I'm glad we ran into you. Yeah. This is awesome. Me too. It's good meeting you again. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. Get ready to watch me huff and puff and probably throw up. Yep, hit. Hit. <laughs> hit. Hit. Ooh. Hit. Wait, that's three for me. Then the last one would have been a wound. <laughs> oh, hit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, hit! Uh, I'm dead. <laughs> Sweet. Well, that was more? that was fun. Yeah. Let me tie my shoe. I brought him to his knees before I, he took me. You did. That was fun. I'm horribly out of shape. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a black belt. This is awesome. Ah, hit. Oh wait, no, that's armor. Hit. 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 Ooh. Careful. Hit. Actually, I hit my hand, but. Is it it? Oh, hoo -hoo -hoo. sweet! That was freaking awesome, man. I'm not gonna say. Got some fighting training. It's been a, it's been you a while. You move like a fighter, though. It's been a while. It came to a draw, but that's fine. Paul, tell us about your uh, your organization, what you're up to, what you do. We are Last Hope Live Action Roleplay, uh, LastHopeLarp.com. We get together once a month for events, twice a week in two different locations for fight night practices. I think our youngest that's come out is six and our oldest that's come out is over 60. Uh, we have a, an ongoing storyline from month to month. Uh, we 
spotlight different areas each month to keep the story going and moving forward. We get out in the woods, we fight against monsters, we build up outposts. We are basically playing Dungeons and Dragons in real life. Right. Well, let me tell you something. I uh, had a good time here. Uh, I just might have to do this again. Good. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you. And uh, thanks for not uh, breaking me. <laughs>